In this video, we're going to introduce you to the practical lab exercises where we're going to explore protein stability and formulation uh, by nanoscale uh, differential scanning ferrometry. There are many applications of thermal stability assays. One of them is formulation, which is essentially to ask the question, under which condition is my protein most stable? There are many applications of this in industry. For example, if you've made a precious protein pharmaceutical or an enzyme to be used in biotechnology, you want to be able to store it under conditions where the activity is preserved, even though you are transporting it around the globe. Second, in academic research, we often spend a lot of time making our precious samples for use, for example, for structural biology or for uh, mechanistic studies. And again, it's crucial to be able to preserve the integrity of the sample. So you can, for example, do this by optimizing the conditions under which you keep your protein, which is what we are going to do in this exercise. Another common application of thermal stability assays is to compare different variants. This could be mutations that you have made yourself, or it could be naturally occurring, for example, disease-causing mutations where destabilization of the protein fold is a common disease-causing mechanism. For example, in this case, the single point mutation that I have highlighted here is strongly correlated to, uh, to the appearance of, of cystic fibrosis. Thirdly, thermal stability assays are also commonly used to study protein ligand interactions based on the fact that a, a binding interaction will stabilize the, the protein and thus shift the melting point, which can be used to screen for interactives in a hydrogroup manner. The principle that we're using here is the environmental sensitivity of the emission spectrum of, of tryptophan. Tryptophan as a hydrophobic amino acid is typically buried in the hydrophobic core of the protein, where its emission will be shifted toward short wavelengths, typically with an emission maximum around 330 nanometers. When a protein unfolds, then the tryptophan gets exposed to the water to a much more hydrophilic environment. So this means that the emission spectrum is pushed towards way longer wavelengths and typically have a change or an emission maximum of 350-ish nanometers. Additionally, you will often see uh, changes in the, the intensity of the fluorescent signal as well. So if we measure the ratio of these two wavelengths uh, as a function of, for example, temperature or denaturant con concentration, we can use this to track the, the folding transition. To so extract information about protein stability from these melting curves, you need to consider two things. First of all, you need to consider the, the, the midpoint of the transition, but you also need to consider the slope. For example, a, a protein with a lower melting point can be more stable at 25 degrees if the slope is different. So in this exercise, we will analyze both the the melting temperature and the slope to get the apparent uh, apparent energy of unfolding as described in this paper right here. In practice, we are going to do our measurements using an instrument called the Nanotemper Prometheus Pantam. This is an instrument that has many advantages. One of the, the most important ones is that it works with really low amounts of sample. So, around 10 microliters of samples down to a concentration of 10 micrograms per milliliter means that you are in the micro to nanogram uh, sample per run. The samples are loaded into a microcapillary, which is a thin glass tube. The sample is loaded simply by sticking the end of the tube uh, of the capillary into the solution and then the capillary force will suck your sample into the tube. You can measure up to 48 samples in parallel using the Prometheus instrument. 